we're Chris and Kel. We bought an old sailboat a while back, and for the last few years, we've been rebuilding it in our driveway, with the goal of becoming a seaworthy vessel. Well, we did it, and we are both still alive. We finally left our driveway and splashed into the Columbia River. What's next for us? You'll just have to find out. Previously on Sailing Adrift. How's it going in here? Lots changed. Uh, let's, let's have a look around here. Yeah, let's, uh, let's take a peek. We gave you a quick tour of our galley and most of the fun features we shoved into it. But wait, there's more. All right, here's this tape you requested. What are you using it for? Check this out. This is one of my, my brilliant ideas that I think is actually going to turn out. So brill. One out of every 50 of my brilliant ideas turns out. So this is it. What does that look like? A mouse trap. Yeah, it does. This will be mounted right over here, like this. Okay. Right. I'm with you. This will be mounted here. And then our knives will go through the slot and into this area. And when we're not like underway, no uh -huh. big deal. It was loosey goosey. Pull it in, put it out. No danger. And then when we go underway, this locks it down. And so the knives will now be stuck because of the like the friction of that. Gotcha. And it's not perfect. I can still pull it out. So mm -hmm. that's why I requested this uh, neoprene tape. I'm going to put a couple of pieces behind the back here so that they're trapped between the neoprene tape and this. Cool. The concept and the reality mm -hmm. are going to be very close together, which is rare. <laughs> I think we should probably just get in the habit of locking it down every time. Well, I mean, not while you're cooking, but yeah. You well, yeah, cook I mean, like, cook. yeah. Anyway, let me uh, rig this up and I'll give you a demonstration. Okay. Oh no, the flooring has spilled my beer. Uh oh. Flooring isn't glued down yet, Kelly. I've been waiting to get this area done and then I'm gonna do it all at once. I see that. Just so you know, we did end up finishing the floor with some help. Exciting times. Flooring, we're flooring. Welcome to Flooring with Justin and Chris. I'm Chris. And I'm Justin. And this is what we do. We spread it, we put it down, we clean it up. Repeat. Yep. Yeah, that was a whole process. Now back to the task. Yeah, it's in. It's in. Temporarily. Obviously, that can't be completely installed until it's got the addition of what, Kelly? Thick end epoxy. Oh. To glue it into place. Everything needs a round of goo, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Okay. okay. This knife goes down in. Watching that. Sweet Easy. action. No yeah. No problem. Mm hmm. Okay. There's that one. And then there's the bread knife here. How many knives are we gonna have? This says bread knife. No, in it doesn't. Japanese. Big liar. Why does that one go backwards? Because it's serrated, Kelly. Why do you ask these silly questions? That I makes no sense. Okay. There, now they're locked down. But are they? I feel like the bread knife is still pretty. Oh. That one's not so locked down. None of them are. That's, Jesus. That be, this one is. Kind of. You're pulling it out. Well, of course I'm pulling it out. Oh. Something's not right. Get the f out. I'm sorry, Jesus. but I'm watching you do it with such ease. Something's not right. Well, you're a f idiot. Yeah, I didn't say that. Your work is rejected. This is unacceptable work from you. I have a double standard. That's callback humor from a fight we had earlier. Yeah, because Kelly's like, oh, you're yeah, rejecting my work is unacceptable, but like without even seeing it. I mean, it's the same story, man. You know how hard I work on this boat? You know how many hours I put into this boat? Because I could f tell you, Kelly. Yeah, here we go. Nine hundred and forty-five hours. A near a thousand hours of my life in this year alone, Kelly. And you poo-poo it so quickly. 
Everything's a prototype, Kelly. I realize that, but I was so, like, based on what you were presenting and seeing it in motion, it <coughs> seemed like it was going to work, and I'm confused why it's not. I'm going to try a thicker foam. Okay. Take two. Yes, 2.0. Which is usually where these things work, work out or I give up, so there's that. I had an epiphany. What's that? A potential one. Okay. So I thought maybe the foam, which this is a lot fatter foam, might have been impeding the adhesion by like kind of like sticking something too high up on this end foam mm -hmm. or on this end strap. So what I've done is not, instead of putting it underneath the strap, I'm flanking either side. Yeah. Therefore the knife will sit here and then this will pull down tight to pinch it. And then the foam will hold it in place, I hope. So brill. I mean, we don't know yet, yeah. but it's critical thinking. There, all right. Now the question is, can we get the knives in easily? Okay, so I can slid in there. Get your big dumb head out of the way. I, I will in a second, Dave. A big dumb head is being used at present. Is it though? Yeah. I already can tell you that this won't come out. <laughs> Sounds good. It's stuck. It definitely won't come out without human interaction. Feeling pretty confident about that. Well, yeah. I mean, it can only go into my body this far, so what damage can it cause? A lot! <laughs> <laughs> God. Take three! We swapped out this size foam for something a little thinner. The big boy goes in. You're gonna put him over here. Okay. Bread knife. So I'll go in easy, right? That's Simple, good. Simple, easy. And then we're gonna strap it down real hard. Yeah, that feels good. That's real under tension. See? See how that doesn't even move, Kelly? Yep, it does. That one doesn't even move either? Okay. And that one. It's mm -hmm. perfect. We've got it figured out. Oh, and this is sliced into that foam. Oh. You can see down there. This okay. is actually the best one. Oh. <sighs> All right, so I think the answer is the medium foam, All which right. means since you made me go back to the skinny foam, uh -huh that you have to peel it off because it was a pain in the butt. Okay. Take four. Hello and welcome to Innovation Today. I am your host, Christopher Edward McCollin. Today we're talking knife blades. In a sea state that is less than ideal, knives will stab into your face and you need to prevent that. So to do so, we've come up with the Knife Restrainer 4.0. Is it worthy of being 4.0? I don't know. These are small changes. Maybe it should really be the Knife Restrainer 2.2. But we're just going to call it the 4.0 because we think big here. Would you like to see it? I would. Take your time. <laughs> here we are in the galley. Finally. Yes. So the Knife Restrainer 4.0, 2.2. Let's say you've got three knives of varying thicknesses and utility. What you want to do is not juggle them unless you're a professional because juggling knives when you don't know what you're doing results in bloodshed. Yeah, I don't think this is going to last long. <laughs> <laughs> I do like the end. Oh, that one went right. Oh, in. whoa. Look at that bread knife. Yeah. How about that? Easy glide. So all we need is multiple bread knives. Mm hmm. That is a shock too because of the serrated edge. Oh, this one went in too. Oh. Right now, these knives are easily removable and usable. Mm -hmm. We're gonna lock this down for Seafair. Okay. Oh God, the waves are coming. They're crashing around, Kelly. Whoa, whoa, but will the knives come out? That's pretty snug. I think they're in place. We're gonna call this one a success. Now for a testimonial from a passerby. Hi. Hey, what do you think about that knife restrainer? I think it looks real great. Yes. Mm -hmm. Seriously, though, is that pretty snug? That it's is pretty, pretty snug. snug. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I can go from side to side, but pulling up, yeah, you know, that's, that's difficult. If you'd like to order this unit, I wouldn't. What I would suggest to do is not emulate me in any way because we're talking about a dangerous sharp object and this is not proven or tested, but we will test it and get back to you. Should this become a thing, I have a feeling that I will be able to retire just disgustingly wealthy because of this invention. I'm rooting for you. I bet you are. Mm -hmm. Next galley experiment, testing our propane connection. Let's give this a shot. I think I got it. Yeah. Right. So the way this works is 
that has a double pull single throw switch. All you have to know is that means if it's got energy, then one of them works, and if it has no energy, then the other one works. So what we have it connected to is the sniffer for propane. So if propane gets detected by the detector, which is directly under us in the uh, engine room, then it will throw the switch. So normally the propane will flow, but if the switch gets thrown, that turns off and the oh. alarm turns on. Oh. Theoretically, if I turn this switch on, this should turn green. Ready. <gasps> Look at that. I mean, so far. Yeah. Did you hear the solenoid click? Uh-huh, I did. You did? I did. Well, let's go get that uh, can of propane that I had you grab. Yeah, and that's a big test old it out. tank. Let's test it out. Okay. Here we go. Fit. Never coming out. Ugh, I don't have that in there the right way. Okay. I think I got it. All the way open, our pressure gauge is uh, towards the top of the full line. So we have flowing propane right now. <laughs> now it where is it gets scary. Let's go inside. Okay. There's only one connection made inside the boat. And that is here at the the range and propane stinks so I want to test the spark how does that work like the pilot light no they, they have like a little igniter I want to make sure that it works here we go I love your face right now. I hear gas. Yeah, I can hear it too. It's a good hiss. <gasps> yep, there it is. There's heat. There's the flame. I can even smell. I can definitely right. smell that. I do not want to burn those stickers. That's a good call. So we have a big bright light that mm -hmm. tells us that it's on, so we know to turn it off. Hulk smash. And then when we're away from the boat, or really anytime you're being Absolutely safe. You should turn it off at the source as well. Yes. This Safety first. Walk all the way out here. Yep. Successful propane system test. Woohoo! A while back, I started making all of our beds for the boat out of foam mattresses we already had. Now that we're moving aboard in a matter of days, it's crunch time to create a comfortable sleeping quarters, which means creating our aft cabin mattress and firing up the sewing machine for basically the first time ever to create covers There's for the bed. mattresses. There's a bed. We got it in. Got the pads in, and Captain Takeover came in and marked them up again. So I have a little bit of cutting to do. Good morning. Hello there. This is our bed. Yes, I'm hacking the crap out of it. I see that. Great, so we're both sleeping on the couch now? You gotta shape this sucker. My big concern is, you know, like I thought this was just a memory foam bed, I forgot that the helixes are hybrid. Right, that's so true. So these intercoils. Uh-huh. And my plan to get it down on the boat is gonna be hard. Like, my original plan was to roll it up really tight in a bag and then suck all the air out and carry it down there. I kind of doubt it, based on what I'm seeing here. Well, that's still the plan, mostly because we don't have a better one. I can't remember what day it is, but it's early. Time to get crafting! After the cover was completed, I wrestled in the mattress and vacuum packed it into one of these slick covers. The taco you see here is actually a king size mattress. Now for the moment of truth. Chris's parents stopped by for the weekend to help us out. Anyway, this thing is pretty great. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That happened quickly. Like, look at, I'm up in the air. Yeah. What pumps it? <laughs> We've got springs. I'm glad it fits. Custom beds mm -hmm. by Helix. Here's the steps to get your own custom Helix brand bed. Research Helix beds. Find out they're really expensive. 
decide, oh, that's too much, and then go online and find out there are people that in the 180 night sleep decide they don't want it. And then they sell those for like half price. Buy one of those, bring it home, cut it up with a saw, and then uh, re-glue foam in the different areas, and there you have it. There, it's simple as that. Uh, oh, you have to make a cover too. Steps. Oh yeah, yeah you have that's... to modify the cover. Mm -hmm. But that's not all the sewing projects we have. I've now got to master upholstery this week and knock out about six cushions for our salon. Oh, also, I had a few backboards to assemble, but those came together pretty quickly. Oh no. We have clearly been robbed. Everything is a mess. Everything is ransacked. There's just... Debris everywhere too, a little piece of tape. Looks like I've been doing an electrical panel. What are you doing, Kelly? What are you up to? I'm sewing. Oh, is that right? Now oh, you have all this that you've been doing that looks expertly done. Look at the quality of this, man. That's gonna look great. All right, well, carry on. I'm gonna get some food. It is late and I have not eaten yet. It's like almost 10. Uh -huh. I left the boat at nine. Yeah, that seems about right. Tune in next week to watch all the chaos of moving out of the house and onto our boat. We'll also show you how those cushions turned out. Hey you, thanks for watching. If you like what you see and you want to keep following along, become a subscriber. Just hit that subscribe button below. And special thanks to our patron crew. We really appreciate your support. These are disposable aluminum cups. Why are they disposable? For the environment. Well, I mean, they're like not a demonstration. It's a circle of life, Kelly. Well, really, for the circle of life, we should catch them and eat them. Why? Circle of life. We're going to avoid that. <laughs> Why is the camera shaking? <laughs> so I'm laughing. Oh. Your pants are falling down. Oh, man. I'm not even plumbing.